Hello and welcome to another video on histological techniques. In a recent video I introduced the Gordon and Sweets silver impregnation technique such as demonstrated here on a section of lymph node and I very briefly made mention of the fact that I would come back and provide more detail as to how to actually produce and handle solutions of ammonia called silver. So what is actually ammoniacal silver? Well you can draw it a bit like this as shown, um, sometimes also referred to as silver diamino hydroxide and um, other times referred to as Tollens reagent. So it goes by a variety of different names. And when it's prepared correctly it's a useful reagent for demonstrating the presence of aldehydes. So whether they be aldehydes free in solution or aldehydes present within the tissue such as in the form of these oxidized reticular fibers you'll find that you'll get reduction of the silver cations to metallic silver. So ammonical silver is a really useful reagent but there's a problem. It's very unstable so you can't actually buy it you need to prepare it yourself fresh each time. And the way that you do that is by combining silver nitrate with ammonia and sodium hydroxide. And there's a couple of different techniques that you may come across for doing this. But what I'll demonstrate in this video is the technique that tends to be favored for histological applications. I'm not sure why, but for whatever reason, I think this technique is one that is favoured by histologists in order to get the best staining outcomes. Or more precisely, it's the technique that provides the clearest demonstration of structures that you're seeking to, to observe, um, whilst also achieving a very low level of background staining. Okay, so what do we actually need to perform this preparation technique? Well, first of all, in terms of PPE, in addition to the usual safety measures, it's vital to perform this technique within a fume cupboard. You need glass test tubes and a test tube rack, transfer pipettes and a waste container for them, some parafilm, and then the main reagents being the silver nitrate, the ammonia, and the sodium hydroxide, as well as some distilled water. Now I should also point out before I commence that this particular demonstration is based upon these approximate proportions. So starting with one mil of silver nitrate, um, probably less than 0.2 mils of ammonia as you'll see, one mil of sodium hydroxide, which when combined with the distilled water actually gives you 10 mils. And that's sufficient to do between 50 to 100 slides. So if you're looking at staining more than 100 slides, then you simply just need to make the necessary adjustments to each of those volumes. So now we commence our procedure by adding the 1 mil of 10% silver nitrate to a clean glass test tube. Typically these test tubes are acid washed to really make sure that there are no salts in there with the potential to um, precipitate out the silver. And then to that one mil we very carefully add one whole drop from this transfer pipette of the concentrated ammonia and you'll see straight away that a precipitate is formed. As you continue to add very small amounts, and this is why it's quite challenging with such small volumes, rather than adding a whole drop, I'm just allowing the drop as it's forming on the end of the pipette to gently touch the side of the test tube. And you'll also notice that I'm positioning the tip as close as possible to the solution. By doing that it ensures that 
any small amounts of ammonia that come out will very quickly mix with the solution rather than taking time to run down the inside of the tube. Okay, So very small amounts are being added. You notice there in the transfer pipette that I'm holding there's little to any ammonia that's actually in there. There's just a couple of drops suspended within the tube. If you have too much ammonia in the transfer pipette it can actually leak quite easily and then you end up with too much ammonia being added so just best to try and only have a very small amount within that transfer pipette and just add the smallest of fractions. So now that there's not much ammonia there I'm just giving the pipette a little bit of a rinse to wash out any small trace amounts and it's the vapour itself which can be quite useful in bringing the end point of this titration to exactly where it needs to be. And this can really seem like it's taking forever but you want to be patient. Okay so now having pretty much used up all that first bit of ammonia I'll just go back and again just withdraw the smallest amount maybe about 50 microliters in total and then again gently not a whole drop but just touch the solution as it's forming as a drop to the side inside of the tube so that it's really just a, a fraction of a drop that's able to come out and then again mixing well and that's just about there you can see now the color is becoming slightly clearer so that's exactly what you want to see at this stage if you get a rapid dissolving of the precipitate then there's a good chance that you've actually gone too far so since that has only changed very very slightly and there's just a hint of precipitate still there that's the right endpoint okay so now having done all that hard work believe it or not we're now going to re-precipitate our silver as silver hydroxide so to do that we will add approximately an equal volume in this case about one mil of the three percent sodium hydroxide and you'll notice that the silver hydroxide is more of a milky brown color compared to that browny black color that we saw for the silver oxide okay so we can give it a good mix at that point quite quite safely and then once it's well mixed now we go back for a second titration with the concentrated ammonia but this time we have to be even more careful so we don't add a whole drop to start we just use that technique of adding small traces of either ammonia or even just the actual vapor itself until we only just clarify that precipitate so basically converting the silver hydroxide to the ammonia called silver so tiny amounts just a fraction touching the side and that's looking like it's getting close there we go so it's just now starting to clear so once again it shouldn't go completely clear you should retain ideally a hint of precipitate within the solution now I'm just going to try a little bit of vapor here just to demonstrate the effect of that alone but to be honest that's probably a good place to stop many of the protocols that you can come across in various textbooks and over the internet they'll often talk about the fact that if you end up with the solution being completely clear that you should add back a little bit more silver nitrate in order to get just the correct balance that you need 
Okay, so just a little bit of vapour across the top, but you do want to retain a slight discoloration to ensure that you've not added too much of the ammonia. Now there's also the option to filter this solution, but prior to doing that, we need to dilute the silver to approximately 10 mils. So in this case, it's about a, a finger's width below the top of the tube. And then we give that a good mix with a clean transfer pipette. So once the solution is well mixed, ideally it should be used straight away within the next 5-10 minutes. In practice, however, we would normally store that for 30 minutes to an hour covered with some parafilm just to reduce the risk of any contaminants falling into the solution and causing the silver to precipitate. So stored in this way for that limited period of time it's quite safe however longer periods of standing the solution will spontaneously produce silver nitride which is highly explosive. So the standard procedure once finished is to discard any of that remaining solution into a 20% sodium chloride solution which converts it to silver chloride and thus renders it safe.